Welcome to Adjusting to Life with Heart Disease, Developing Heart Healthy Habits. My name is Lauren Diapoli. I have a bachelor's in social work with a concentration in gerontology from Concordia College, New York. I am a candidate for my master's in applied nutrition at the University of New England. I've been a case manager for special needs children and with mentally disabled older adults. And I've been a circulation librarian at two different libraries, which really helped me hone my researching skills and abilities. And I've been a certified personal trainer through the American Fitness Professional Association. Today, we're going to discuss the importance of adhering to heart healthy lifestyle changes, how to read and understand nutrition labels, and how to recognize and choose low sodium food options. This is really important uh, because the leading cause of death for women in Suffolk County are complications from cardiovascular heart disease. Medical literature shows that lack of nutrition information and education has contributed to this epidemic. Also, stopping the necessary medications and failing to make long-term healthy lifestyle changes increases risks. The American Heart Association states that dietary intervention and healthy behavioral changes significantly reduce morbidity rates. Some of the behaviors that increase risk are cigarette smoking, having an increased body fat percentage, having a stomach fat accumulation, and a sedentary lifestyle. Um, but you can take healthy steps towards wellness and decrease some of these risk factors uh, step by step, little at a time. Some other risk factors are elevated blood sugar, high LDL cholesterol, high blood pressure, and excessive alcohol use. So, controlling current co occurring conditions like these things I've, I've mentioned, reduces your risk of heart-related complications. The FDA, the American Heart Association, and the Mayo Clinic all state that you can reduce your risk of worsening conditions with healthy lifestyle changes, and you can increase your life expectancy by adopting heart-healthy habits and maintaining them long-term. So where are we going to start? One, do not smoke tobacco. It's not encouraged for anyone. With your healthcare provider, you can choose exercises that are healthy for you and that you enjoy. So mostly what we want to stress here is that you should recognize the importance of adopting healthy dietary habits and adjusting to different lifestyle changes. This is all about your health and keeping you alive longer. Take your medication as prescribed by your doctor. That's vital. It can help you control your co-occurring disorders. Discuss with your loved ones your plan for healthy living. Sit down and let them know that you're going to be making some changes and that you're doing this because you want to be able to spend more time with them. Find healthy ways to manage your stress, whether that's through exercise, meditation, however you like to spend your downtime. Make an active decision to take control of your health. Only you are capable of making these changes, and so you're, you have the control to do so. With your healthcare professional, can control your underlying health conditions, as I mentioned, and mainly what we're going to focus on here and what's super vital is reducing your intake of sodium. Think positively and believe in your ability to do all of these things. Surveys show that Americans eat an average of 3,500 milligrams of sodium a day. That's more than one and a half times the recommended upper limit for a healthy individual. Unfortunately, many people underestimate their intake of calories and sodium. So due to the sodium content in many of the packaged foods and meals from restaurants, it's likely that the average American is eating over 6,000 milligrams of sodium daily. The recommended limit of sodium for a healthy individual is 2,300 milligrams a day. And that's for someone who doesn't have a heart, heart disease and doesn't have a high blood pressure. But just one teaspoon of table salt is 2,300 milligrams of sodium. So cooking with an average recipe that has one teaspoon of, ta of salt, you're already in that recipe getting what the limit is for a healthy individual. This shows us just how easy it is to take in an unhealthy amount of sodium. 
We know that excess sodium in negatively affects our blood pressure, our kidneys, blood vessels, and the heart. Numerous medical organizations and government agencies suggest that you intake less than 1,500 milligrams of sodium daily. The FDA provides this chart to help you understand some common nutrient claims on food packages. So if it says salt and sodium free, that means that there is less than five milligrams of sodium per serving. There might be numerous servings in the package and we'll kind of go into that in a few slides, but basically this is a good option. Less than five milligrams of sodium per serving means it's, it's a healthier food for you. Very low sodium means less than 35 milligrams of serving, uh, sodium in a serving, which is also not terrible. Um, and low sodium has, this is a big jump here, 140 milligrams of sodium, sodium per serving. So if you eat a bunch of servings of this food, you're eating a pretty high sodium meal. And now reduced sodium is kind of tricky because this says it has at least 25% less sodium than the regular product, which could still be sky high. Say it's an item like a cheesy cracker or some kind of snack food. The original product might have had an insane amount of sodium. So you still want to look at how many milligrams of sodium there are per serving and use your best judgment numerically as opposed to just going by these, these food claims. Although for things like canned uh, beans and vegetables, no salt added or unsalted is ideal um, because you know they're basically just giving you the product as is and it doesn't have uh, a whole bunch of sodium in it making it uh, an unhealthy food. Remember, not all foods that are high in sodium taste salty. So you may recognize things like potato chips or soy sauce are high sodium food, but there are also cereals and breads and cheeses and cold cuts and, and all different kinds of baked goods that might have hidden, hidden amounts of sodium. So if there isn't a nutrition label on it to give you an idea of how much sodium is in it, you could even maybe Google it and get an idea of how many sodium is so how much sodium is in the product or in a serving of the product. And learning to read nutrition labels really helps you find and prepare and even order low sodium foods. So we're going to go through um, kind of how to read a nutrition label and how to make it work for you in terms of reducing your sodium. So this is a box of white cheddar macaroni and cheese. And over here it tells you servings per container, tells you how much, how many servings are in this product. And this tells you about uh, how much you should typically eat at one time. So this says about three ounces. So there's, you know, give or take six ounces in this, this box. And this tells you how much, how many calories are in the mix. This is just what's in the box and as prepared includes, uh, the the content of the food plus what you pair it with and here i think it says just three tablespoons of low-fat milk um it often tells you to use butter i think when you're cooking a, a box of macaroni and cheese and that also obviously adds to the sodium and the fat and the calories so this tells you here this little row tells you each nutrient listed and it gives you the amount in grams per serving and again, this is in just the mix, and this is as you would prepare it. You want to limit your intake of saturated fat, and you should be strictly limiting your intake of sodium. As you can see here, this is a really high sodium food. So if you happen to make this on your own, eat the whole box of it, you're eating way more sodium uh, than you should be in one meal. Um, this here tells you the fat per grams in serving, uh, per serving, and as I mentioned, you want to really completely avoid trans fats and limit your intake of saturated fat. You want to decrease your intake of foods that are high in these nutrients, typically. Um, depending upon what the item is, uh, some fats are good for you, but for the purpose of this, we're trying to really eliminate our saturated fat intake, our cholesterol, and our sodium intake. And we want to increase our intake of foods that are high in these vitamins and minerals here. Now this is a different uh, nutrition label. This is unsalted canned black beans, which are a great staple you should have in your pantry. Um, I always suggest when you go to the store and you see cans of unsalted beans on sale, go ahead and stock up on them because you can make 
a nice, easy, uh, affordable meal out of this. This is a very low sodium food. It has less than five, uh, it has five milligrams per serving. And it is a, high, a food that's high in dietary fiber and also high in protein. Um, it has some calcium, so iron, and it's just prepared black beans in water. This is excellent food to keep on hand. Now, this might not seem very appealing to you, so I gave an idea here of how to use this can of beans um, and also some other things you might have in your spice rack and some other uh, ingredients that are good to have on hand. So here's the list of ingredients here. You could take a look at that quickly. And I'll just explain kind of how to make this into a, a nice dinner for two people. You could double it and make a family meal out of this. You could also make a, a vegetable on the side or have a salad with it. So you're going to heat oil in a large pot over medium heat and saute onions and garlic for about five minutes or until soft. You can do this longer if you'd like. I like to caramelize my onions. That's just cooking them on a low heat for a long time, but you could just saute these quickly. And then you're going to add the brown rice, and uh, this is going to crisp it a little, and the tomatoes and the spices, and continue to saute it for about another minute. You're going to add filtered water and the bay leaf and bring it to a boil. Once that's boiling, you're going to cover it and reduce the heat. And this is going to create a nice little stock because you you've have all these delicious spices in here and the tomatoes and the onions and garlic. Uh, so it's going to cook the rice while it also kind of makes a flavorful, uh, uh, you know, mix of, of ingredients. And then you're gonna cook that for about 40 minutes stirring occasionally. When it's done, carefully remove the bay leaf and add the beans and then heat that up a little more and you're gonna serve that hot. You could garnish it with chopped lettuce or with no fat plain Greek yogurt, which is a nice sour cream substitute if you'd like. And this is a really nice uh, black bean and brown rice recipe that tastes uh, flavorful and familiar, has lots of, of hearty richness to it. It definitely fills you up and it's super affordable and low sodium. So, here are some basic tips for choosing healthy options. Uh, you want to Always grocery shop on a full stomach. Don't go into the grocery store ravenously looking for foods. Bring a shopping list with you and choose more fresh fruits and vegetables. I like a rule of thumb I like to use at the grocery store is staying around the perimeter mostly. The perimeter is where you're going to find all of the fresh veggies and things like that. And then the cold uh, freezer section, you can buy lots of frozen vegetables there. Um, and even the, the back of the store is usually the meats, fresh meats and dairy items. So uh, the only aisle you really might need to go on is maybe the ethnic aisle for beans and pasta, uh, rice and things like that. But for the most part, it helps you avoid buying packaged foods. Um, also, grocery shopping and keeping a well-stocked pantry helps you prepare more meals at home and gives you the option of packing healthy meals and snacks to go. If you're grocery shopping on a budget, I definitely suggest buying frozen vegetables and frozen fruits. They're really cost-effective. I like to defrost some frozen berries in a bowl overnight and have that with my yogurt in the morning. Also, unsalted canned vegetables, like I mentioned, the beans are also affordable options. Make sure when you are shopping for canned uh, vegetables, you're looking at the sodium content. Try to buy things that are not prepared with salt. And also clip coupons and check for manager specials. It's also helpful to become a rewards member of your local store. The local store uh, here uh, nearby, Wild by Nature, has a, a incentive where if you buy a certain amount of things every month, they send you a coupon, which is really helpful. Dining out when you're trying to choose low sodium foods does not have to be difficult. Most menus do offer some heart healthy options and it's not just a plain salad. Um, you can ask your server about low sodium options or even ask for your meal to be prepared without added salt. It's possible that they make their sauces to, uh, you know, on the spot or they season their foods as they go. You can ask to have them make your items with no salt. Um, some places are more accom uh, accommodating than others, but you can also start to recognize what foods are lower in sodium on your own, and that kind of helps you, you know, approach a menu with a whole new 
uh, set of tools in your arsenal for choosing low-sodium foods.